guys, today's card, um, I'm going to be using this CD-ROM, um, the Flower Fairies Friends, it's Fairies of the Garden, and I'm using um, Marigold, which is, I don't know if you can just see I'm trying to get it without the light, that one there, um, and this is a CD-ROM that is produced by Crafters for Companion, so I'm using that, and what I've already done is I have printed out the sheet of... Um, it's going to be well it would be decoupage but it's actually technically this one is twist apage where basically I don't know if you can see that's the sort of finished look that we're going to be going for okay so basically what we'll do is cut around all of these images and then stick them together then I've also printed um, a sheet of uh, paper for backing paper to use with my main card then I've printed off a sheet of borders uh, I'm not sure there's a way up particularly with these um, obviously what's happening is you get quite a few borders on there so you can use them as sticky you can put, cut them up and then use them through a sticker machine to make them like sticky ribbon or whatever um, but it prints out a whole sheet then I've printed out my insert which um, obviously I need to cut down to size but obviously we'll fold in half so it'll be blank on this half when you open the card and then on this side we've got obviously our lovely little flower fairy and then I've put in a sentiment there which I've colour colorized because on the CD you can colorize it well you can colorize all of it pretty much um, but you know with a name like Marigold we can't really have a blue one blue fairy so um, that's Marigold there in the corner just and then I've just added this sentiment wishing you all the joy and a happy retirement can bring. Um, I don't know if it's really a retirement card but I thought well why not so we go for that. Then we've got two pieces of um, card now they're both the same one, and they're these um, topsy-turvy cards from Crate and Craft so one side is the darker orange and one side is the paler orange Now the reason I've got two pieces is one is going to actually make my card base and the other piece I may well use for matting and layering of my actual um, so I've just got a second piece in case so what I am going to do is have the paler side on the outside of the card and then this dark side on the inside so that although it's darker you're not going to see so much of it because it's going to be um, kind of hidden by the insert so let's get cutting things up okay so first things actually before we start cutting is to score this piece of card in half and um, make it into a proper card. Now I'm going to use, I've, got, I've had this a while, even though I often you see me use my Martha Stewart board, is I'm actually going to use the Crafters Companion scoreboard. Now the reason for this is this, um, because it, it is actually for the UK, so it has got um, a half fold of the A4, whereas Martha Stewart hasn't actually got a perfect line, a line that is absolutely in the perfect position for a half fold of an A4. So I always end up finding that I'm scoring on the wrong line. So hopefully this should be correct. So you always butt up against the edge here where the handle is on these. Um, I don't know if I can bring this out any further so you can see. Oh, that's, no, that's as far out as I can go, I'm afraid, guys. Um, and then you look at the side here. I don't know if you can see, there's all different words and it gives you gate folds, tri folds, half folds, A5, five inch square fold, half fold A4, which is the one we're looking for. So you can see we've got all embossing lines, etc. And there's all sorts of things on this board. So what I'm looking for here is my half fold A4, and I'm gonna just score along here using my little scoring tool. Now just press lightly, and as it's a thicker card, we'll just go a few more times, rather than pressing really hard, which I've done in the past, because what happens is if you press really hard, Rather than actually scoring it, you just make a big hole. Not a good look. Okay, then turn your card over. Uh, I know I was doing it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. And then butt it up against that edge again, and then bring this edge to meet, like so. And then using your scoring tool, just flatten that edge down, like so. With that, just to give a nice, crisp fold on the card and then I'm actually because I actually wanted it the other way around I'm going to just turn it in the other way okay because I forgot when I scored it I just automatically it doesn't really matter it gives it a nice nice bend when it moves 
Okay, so now we've got a piece of A4 card folded in half beautifully. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is start cutting out, well, get this out of the way, and then we'll start cutting up our insert. I think so. Well, first, I'm going to cut this to size using a um, guillotine. So I will switch this off and I'll come back to you in a minute. I've just cut, as you can see, um, the edges of, of my um, insert here. Sorry, that was me just locking the guillotine because otherwise I'd probably end up chopping my hand off knowing me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold this one the wrong way around because it is too long. If I fold this in half, you'll see it's actually masked too long. So I'm going to first of all fold it to the position that I want it to be because it was printed on an A4 piece of card, uh, paper. So I'm just going to fold it so that the line here is straight. So we're just going to fold that in like so. And then I'm going to cut off that excess there, okay? So what we've done is we've just tidied that up so it's even. So now we're going to fold that in the right way, like so. And then we're going to get our card and pop this on the inside. Now this obviously is a slightly too big this card, so I'm going to actually take I'm going to put it in where I want it and then I'm going to take the card down a little bit, I think. Um, I think I, I remember now I actually resized this and I forgot that I'd resized it because I wanted it slightly smaller than the A4, so I forgot and I'd done that. So that's fine. We'll just put it in the right place and then we'll cut it down. Okay, so we're going to get a little glue pen. Put some on the actual insert. Now you could use the method that I've used before, you've seen me use where I've just run the glue along here, but because I'm not quite sure where I'm going to be putting this, I thought it'd be easier to do it this way. So then I'm making sure that it's the right way around and I've put the glue on this side. Um, the reason I do that is just so that as it opens, it literally drags the um, insert open so the people can see it rather than it sort of flapping and staying closed. Okay, so then we're just going to basically line that up to the centre parting, as it were, and then close our card over it, like so. Okay, so then all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my guillotine, which I don't know if you can see in here, it's a big, big old thing, but it can be split. This is um, a purple cow guillotine, so we're just going to... Um, I've also got the rotary cut to the other end um, and I've only just got it and I absolutely love it, it's brilliant, it's the best one I've ever got because I tell you I've gone through a few because I can't stand them, they've always been such a nuisance. So here we go, just cut that down and you could hear how that just went through that like butter and then I'll just cut that edge down as well and the last side. And all done. And then just place that down. Then we get rid of our scraps and pick up our card. I'm sorry you can't see that bit on camera, but it's just I can't get the camera far enough away. Okay, but as you can see now, it, it fits. <laughs> so it looks a lot better. Okay. And that's what I said also is as it opens, you can see, look, it, it opens it with that kind of pulling the flap up, which is much better. Okay, next we're going to start putting our twister parge together. Okay, so here's our twister parge. So using a craft knife, we're going to just start cutting out these edges. Now, I'm uh, these actual shapes. Now, I'm going to just do this first of all roughly by hand, and then I'll what I'll do is I'll cut these all out, and then I'll come back to you because I think otherwise we'll be here forever on camera. Okay, I'll be back with you in a minute. Last one, again, just so you can see. I'm just doing it by freehand and by eye, just running along the edges with my craft knife. Just making sure I'm holding on to it so that it doesn't wrinkle as you're cutting. That's a bit of a tiny bit. Oh, sorry guys, you're off camera. And then just a tiny bit there. See how it wrinkles if you're not holding on to it properly, but it doesn't matter, you just go back and that side there is just not quite straight, so I'm just going to take a 
little piece there like that. There we go. So that's our last piece cut. Okay, let me just zoom you out and show you what we've got. So we've got all of these pieces here, which we will then, which I've cut out. So we'll then use. Um, I'm gonna. You could either use 3D foam or um, silicone glue or something like that. So um, I'm probably going to use my Pinfair glue, which is basically like silicone glue, um, and then I can really judge how my thickness is. But for the moment, I'm going to put this bit to one side because I don't want this quite yet. I want the bottom layer. But that's all. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to, what I'm going to do now is attach this bottom layer to this piece of orange card. So I'm going to have the dark side up so that it complements the card that's down there. So that it makes a little frame around the edge of my image. And then what we do, the last thing I'll do is build up my, my actual image. Because I'm going to be using a wet glue, so I want to do that last. Okay. Now again, I tend to, um, let's move this out of the way because I know I'm going to put glue on that otherwise. I tend to um, cut after I've stuck the image down because I find then I can get the sizing just so. Whereas if I try to measure it beforehand, you never get it quite right. Mind you, I'm not sure I ever get it quite right even when I do it this way, but I've got more of a chance. Okay, so we're going to just pop this in the corner. Right, so just leaving just a narrow border around these two edges and then I'm going to use my uh, guillotine and just chop off these pieces here around this side. Okay, so as you can see here we go, we've got a nice um, little mat around the edge of that now so that as we build that up it just, when we put it on our card it will just give it a bit of something extra. So the next thing that we're going to do is using the piece of paper that we printed out as our patterned paper we're going to put that on our actual card as um, a layer so the next thing I need to do is cut first of all all the white edges off and then I can match I can turn it over and I can work out exactly what size I want this to be because I want a, just a small amount of this um, paler, paler orange to show through again to, to layer it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut off that uh, excess white and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've cut off the excess of the white around my paper now. So essentially, what I've got is just a normal piece of pattern paper, just in this instance that I've created it via a CD ROM rather than it being produced for me. Uh, by a company. However, I, I had a slight sort of change in design thought here. What I originally was going to do was uh, map this all the way down to the bottom of the card, right down to here, and then put my image up here and then use my little ribbon piece across. But it occurred to me that my ribbon piece is all flowery as well, so what would look quite nice actually is to map another square using this patterned paper and then putting the ribbon across in the flowers on the plain on the plain card stock rather than on a flowery piece of paper so that's what we're going to do now so we're going to try and do this kind of so that quite a lot of this um, shows so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to use my little mat as a guide and then we'll make some marks to see where we need to cut. Okay, these are only just approximate guides but what we need to do is make sure that from here to here is, I like it to be even this side to this side as it is top and bottom. Uh, so let's just take this right up here, put that there like that. So I think for this side we need to mark it just about here and then I think for here we want it probably about there. Okay, let's uh, go cut this and see how that looks. Okay, so here's this piece cut out ready to go up on the top part of our card here and then we'll map that on top of there like so. So we can see a nice amount of the pattern around the edge 
and then we'll be able to put a, piece, a border of our ribbon on there. So I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to stick this piece of paper down next. Okay, just using my lovely ATG gun. These shorter nails, I can't turn this around. Oh, that's better now. I've got some glue on there. I can use the glue to pick it up. There we go. Make sure that's right up to the edges, and then some in the middle. And we're done. Okay, and I'll just make sure this is the right way. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, Which way was it? That way. That way. So I'm looking at where the flowers are, so that where they'll show, so that um, uh, you know you can see which is the right direction. Now I'm just going to pull this down here, so that I can make sure that I'm really lining it up. Or keep dropping it and sticking it. Okay, I just want to make sure I line it right up here at the top correctly. So, so there we've got that piece stuck down okay and then we're going to put our first layer of our marigold fairy stuck down and then we'll start building that up in a minute once we've done our sticky ribbon as it were I'm putting just plenty of glue on this one because um, it's quite heavy with all that card there. Okay, so we're just going to put that in the centre. I think that's not quite straight. That's just... This is the other thing is when you're sticking down, don't press until you're absolutely sure that you've got it straight. Especially with this ATG, it doesn't go, it doesn't lift again very easily. Okay, so there we go. That's that piece in the centre then. So I'm still not going to build up my image yet. These parts, I'm still leaving those to one side. The next thing I'm going to use is I'm going to cut off one of these pieces of um, ribbons and I'm going to put that across the bottom there. Okay. So I've put that through my this through my little Xyron um, sticker maker, made it sticky. And then I'm just going to stick that down where I want it to be. Give it a good press. And then with some scissors, just trim off the excess here on the back. Like so. And then you've got lovely ribbon at the bottom here. Okay. The other thing that I've got that I'm going to put on that I might well put on at the end is this box of gorgeous yellow and orange flowers. So I thought I'd pick out just a couple of these to put down here, but I will probably do that after I've done my actual decoupage uh, or twistapage because um, I think otherwise they're going to get in my way. Next we're going to do is the actual twistapage. Right, and then I've got my pieces, so we're basically just going to build them up in order as per the numbers that I've done on there, and I'm going to use my pin flare glue, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just put this here for the first one, and then after that uh, you'll know what I'm doing. So basically all I'm doing is putting some little dots of my pin flare. Now I don't want it too high. I'm trying to do this so you can see. Just uh, little dots. We've got a little blockage. So little dots of little dots of the pin flare, just to give it some with some height on the in this instance, not too close to the edge. But 
we want to have some height but not too mad because I don't like thing I don't personally like it when it's really high. Okay. And then we just slide this off the edge of the table. Grab hold of it. And then we position it. I don't know if you can see just very faintly there there's a white line. So we're going to follow that white line. But that's the beauty of having the pin flare is that if necessary we can move it and then I just give it a gentle squish down just to put it in position there we go so that's number one so, or rather yeah that's number two gone down number three next two gone down so now I'm just uh, putting my pin flare on number three Getting more on me than I am on the paper. And again, following that white line. Placing that down like so. Okay, and I don't know if you can see, if I turn it to the side, you can see how it's starting to just build up. And if I bring it nice and close, you can see how it's twisting. Now the other thing you could do, which um, because it, it actually shows more in life the twist, but you could actually ink up all the edges as well to give it a bit more definition if you wanted to. And another thing that I've done in the past is actually um, say if I've got this is the orange mat here, is I've matted each piece into um, either the orange or the mirror board or something like that. So that works quite well. So that's the twist page done, and as you can see from there, if you look at the side, it's got a real nice twist on it and it just looks a bit a bit different and I haven't done it too high as you can see when I'm going to take you to the side so it's still going a regular envelope okay so now let's just zoom you out a bit and we're going to put our flower on here now while I was off camera I found these this little flower and also in amongst those other big flowers um uh, in some big flowers I had uh, that were orange, I found this lovely little leaf and I thought well that would look quite nice, sort of autumnal kind of look, just popping that leaf down there and then putting the flower on there as well. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to put the leaf down first. So I'm actually going to use my pin flare glue for that as well. Put a blob of the pin flare glue on the leaf as well. Not, I don't want to go all the way to the edges. Just want to go around kind of this centre point here. It's the beauty of this pin flare, it will basically stick anything to anything. So we'll pop this just kind of here. And then just put a bit extra on that bit. And then we'll put some on the back of my flower. Okay, and then we'll just got a nice big blob on the back there. And then we'll just stick our flower down on top of our leaf. Okay, and that's our finished card for the day. Really hope you enjoyed that. I just thought it would be something a bit different to show you because I quite like using digital um, crafting, so I thought it'd be something different to show you rather than using the Cricut. So let's um, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me just give you a bit of a close-up of the, of the card. Okay, pop that down. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this card. Um, I thought it was just something a little bit different um, than what I've shown you before. I actually really enjoy using CD ROMs, etc. So I thought I'd just share that with you as something a bit different to what I've done before. Uh, thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave comments because I love to hear your comments. Bye for now. Bye.